Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and today I'm going to do a wrap up. So August has been a great reading month so far. However, my mental health has been not so great. Today, I just really feel like I can't be bothered that much. Like, do you guys ever feel that way? Like, I want to tell you guys about these books, so I want to make a video, but I also don't feel like sitting here forever. So, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first book is a DNF. This is In Other Worlds by Margaret Atwood. So I picked this up a while ago because I love Margaret Atwood. Um, however, this collection of vignettes or short stories I thought were going to be her musing on sci-fi. What it actually is about is like random stories of her childhood and her thoughts on things that are quite honestly not interesting. So this is a DNF. Um, I think my husband might give it a go in the future, but um, we'll see. But I, yeah, I don't recommend this one. So my second DNF is Skin by Kath Koja. And this one is a super big disappointment because this was one of my picks for the Spooky Smart Bitch Readathon, which is going on right now. And I thought that I was going to love it because it's kind of blurbed as a sapphic love story between Tess, who is a welder, and BB, who is a guerrilla performance artist who likes to push her body to the limits. And I mean, that sounds like amazing, like something I've never read before, and I'm always here for queer love. However, I got 33% of the way through, and I found myself thinking, why am I reading this? Why am I continuing to slog through this? It really wasn't working for me for a few reasons. So Koja's writing style is very distinctive. It's like what is described as staccato. Basically, she doesn't write sentences necessarily like you're probably used to reading. She leaves things out, omits things, and also puts things in kind of like in a run-on way, but sometimes it's fine, sometimes it's annoying. But overall, it gives kind of this air of trying so hard to be different. And that's also carried through in the plot where it's kind of trying so hard, like they're both misunderstood artists and they're both trying to better their art and they're just so pretentious kind of. And it got to the point too where like they start doing shows together where Tess is a welder and then there's all these dancers that are doing different sort of performances. And I think by the time I read the fourth performance and we were only 33% of the way through the book, I was like, I honestly cannot take any more of this. I don't care about the characters. It feels like we are kept at an arm's length from them and I don't like the writing style that much. And also as much as you think that body gore and a queer love story would keep you interested, I was so bored and I really didn't want to keep reading. So I just made the decision. I'm not going to get myself into a reading slump. I just want to read way like better things. So next up is Pet Cemetery by Stephen King, which I gave two stars. And I just don't think King and I are going to get along. So I was really interested in the story, which is following a young family who moves to Maine. The father is a doctor and basically they learn that in their backyard woods, there is a place called the Pet Cemetery where kids will bury their pets and there's a place beyond that place which might have the ability to bring things that have died back to life is the premise. And the reason that this didn't work for me is definitely the writing style and the length. So, so many times we would be introduced to characters or descriptions of places would be given, they're way too long sentences long, paragraphs long, way, way too long. And honestly, I just, if I wasn't reading this book for the readathon and if I wasn't reading this book for like my first Stephen King, I would have DNF'd like <laughs> way before. Um, and then as well, I saw a lot of the aspects of the plot coming. Like I really wasn't shocked at all. And I also didn't really find it that scary. 
there were some gruesome parts where like due to like decay it's gross but like being actually scared i was more so annoyed that things were so long uh, that it took i was more angry than scared let's say that so i just don't think king's writing style is for me because if anything i've heard that his other books only get longer and i'm like oh hell no so next up is burn our bodies down by rory power which is one of my most anticipated books of the year she previously wrote wilder girls which i gave four stars and i really loved her imagination so in burn our bodies down we're following a young woman who decides she's going to leave her mother and travel to a nearby town where she believes her family is from because she hasn't known them her whole life. So she wants to figure out why her mother has been hiding them and what's really going on. And unfortunately, I just really didn't get on with the plot and I thought it was so slow and I thought like I felt like nothing happened until the very end. And I also wasn't connected to any of the characters. So I was kind of left with like a, ha, huh, okay, that happened. So overall, it just left me feeling really meh about the book and I gave it three stars. So the next book I'm gonna talk about is The Murders of Molly Southbourne by Tate Thompson. This one is about Molly Southbourne who, when she bleeds, clones of herself sprout up and try to kill her. It's awesome. Honestly, I think that this story is really great. And the main reasons that I gave it three and a half stars, not higher, is because it's so short. So I feel like I didn't really connect to any of the characters. Like I didn't really feel for them or get in their heads. And the other thing is that at the very end, there's this huge info dump section that just basically explains everything. And I was like, isn't this just lazy story writing? Like, shouldn't that have been dropped in clues throughout so that we could try to figure it out or at least have a chance? But instead, it's largely kept from the main character. And then at the end, it's like, everything is revealed. And I'm like, I hate when books do that. Like a villain monologue, a found letter, like an email, like something where they're like, huh, and then it basically, tells you everything and I'm just like ah yeah so I gave it three and a half stars do recommend it it's short sweet and very very bloody so next up is a witchy read this is the year of the witching by Alexis Henderson so I picked this up just because it sounded super good it was kind of like a feminist witchy cult type book um, and we're following a main character named Emmanuel who lives in Bethel and Bethel is kind of a walled off city in the wilds and it has isolated itself from everywhere else. And there is the prophet who is basically this super creepy old guy who marries a bunch of young women and has children with them and his word is law. What could go wrong? And we're following Emmanuel whose mother had relations with someone she wasn't supposed to so she herself is of mixed race and she doesn't really fit in in town and when an ancient curse that is set off by like these three witches in the wild starts to manifest itself she is going to try and stop it because basically it's like causing really bad things to happen the water is running with blood people are trying to kill themselves it's like not a good time so i liked the idea of this a lot and if this had been a duology i really think that i would have given this book higher and i honestly thought in my mind for some reason i was obviously wrong that it was a, at least a duology because up until maybe the last 30 pages i was like this is great it's gonna end this way and then the next book is gonna like have to deal with that other arc but then in the last 30 pages it wrapped everything up very neatly and quite unbelievably and i was like wait what why 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 so it gets three and a half stars because i love the idea and i love the story that we were on and then like the last 30 pages i was like 
poor choices were made. <laughs> this could have, I would have read two books, but uh, you squeezed it into one and I'm not sure it worked in the end. So I was getting into a reading slump, so I decided to pick up um, just your typical mystery thriller and I read The Ruin by Dervla McTiernan. This is the first one I've read from her. She is an Irish mystery thriller writer. So we're following a detective who is trying to solve these series of cold cases because basically he's transferred back to a small town and they're kind of giving him a hard time. But when his cold case coincides with a suicide which has recently happened but the but the girlfriend and the sister of the person who committed suicide believes it was a murder, he gets entangled in what's going on with that. So this was just really good. I stayed up till 1 a.m. last night reading it. I just like to get lost in a romance or a thriller. And honestly, if I'm in a good mood, I want a romance. And if I'm in a bad mood, I want a mystery thriller. So. That's why I read this and it was good. I give it four stars. So now we have my favorite two books so far of August. This is Foul is Fair by Henna Kappen. So this one, man, is it good. So if you like a female led revenge story where the people really deserve, then this is for you because we're following Jade who went to a party with her three best friends and they dressed up and they went there and she was drugged and raped by multiple guys at the party. And when she tells her friends the next day, basically they accept that they're going to help her get revenge at any cost. So she tells her parents she wants to transfer schools to the school where the boys are and she is going to kill them one by one. And let me tell you, there were no punches pulled and it was just so freaking, what's that word called? When so, just such good satisfaction, satisfactory. Just the ending was just, yes. And I believe this is in a series and I will absolutely be picking up the next one. And my favorite book of the year so far is Trail of Lightning, number one by Rebecca Rowanhorse, who is an indigenous author. Wow. This is so good. I don't know how I didn't know about this before. So we follow Magdalena, Mags for short, who is a monster hunter. So in this world, if you are a clan member, some random clan members can be passed down certain powers that are within their tribe. So she is living arrow. Um, she basically has super speed and she's great at killing, which makes her an excellent monster hunter. Because in this world, monsters manifest in different ways. Like there's man-made, chemical-made, and also like god-made, and just a spirit realm of monsters. It's absolutely wonderful. And she teams up with a friend of hers, nephew named Kai, who is kind of like this laid back character and he's gonna help her on her journey to hunt down the monsters. And let me tell you, like this book is just absolutely amazing. It has like so much indigenous lore and facts and things that I never knew. And I listened to this on audio. I'm so glad I listened to it because the pronunciations of the names in here, I would definitely have pronounced that wrong in my head if I was reading. So it was just so good. And also the narrator is so excellent. I was excited, I was nervous, I was blushing, like it was so good. I loved it so much. Magdalena is one of my favorite characters of the year by far. If that sounds at all interesting to you, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I wish that more people would talk about this book. It's absolutely amazing. I myself heard about it from Et Tu Brody. They talk about a lot of indigenous works, but this one specifically caught my eye and I just highly, highly recommend it. It was so good. So that's it guys. That's it for today. That's my wrap up for August. Um, I'm having an awesome reading time, like a shit mental health time. Um, if you guys can relate, let me know because I don't want to be on here and be like, oh my god, I'm so happy. I mean, nothing wrong with that, but also that's just <laughs> not how I'm feeling right now. Um, yeah, if you made it this far, leave me a lightning bolt down below in honor of Trail of Lightning and I will show you love in the comments. All right, I will see you later. Bye.